So today I am at my dad's house, which is a different setup. As you can see, I don't really have any books here. These are like books from when my sister was young um, and some PlayStation games. So I'm just making the best of it. I am in front of a bookshelf. It's just not really got any good books in it. So apologies for that. Today I am here to do some book reviews. So the first one that I'm going to do for you guys today is so exciting because actually this is or was my most anticipated book for the second half of this year. I have been waiting for this book and hoping it was good and I was very very kindly sent a copy of this by Orbit. I kind of did some begging and that is The Blood Mirror by Brent Weeks. This is the fourth book in the series, the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. I have read all the previous ones and I really enjoyed them. I think it was a series that is a little bit hard to get into at first, quite a complex magic system that I think not everyone gets or wants to get because it is quite complicated. I mean, I will freely admit that I didn't really understand it for most of the first book until the second half when I started to get a grip on things. The second and third books I loved because I was fully immersed in the world and I was just really enjoying it. And the fourth book was no exception to that either. The Blood Mirror was utterly fantastic. I adored so much of it. It was just so good. So what is this about? It's set in a world where the world is ruled by the Chromeria. The Chromeria are kind of like this council of people who are very magical, they've got very strong powers, and they're also very politically minded. So a lot of them are quite conniving, a lot of them are quite scheming. They're just not the nicest people you'll ever meet, probably, but they do essentially rule over this world. In this world, people can draft colours, which means they can draw from the colours in the visible spectrum and they can use them to kind of turn into magic. Um, it's a really interesting idea and I definitely like it. If you do like people like Sanderson and the way he does his magic systems, I think that Brent Weeks is probably the closest I've come to a Sanderson-esque magic system, not by Sanderson. This is definitely more complicated than Mistborn. Mistborn feels very easy to pick up, it's just you swallow this and then you get that. Whereas this has different properties and throughout the books we're also seeing our characters discovering more and more new things about these colours and about these powers. So what I particularly love about Brent Weeks and his writing style is that he is not afraid to just bam 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 shock you again and again and again. And he does that so incredibly well within the series. In the first few books we think that we know lots of things and then in this book so many of those things just got turned on their head and flipped around and I was like what? I think there were probably two major moments where I was literally like I cannot believe this, I am so amazed. So that was really really cool but yeah oh my goodness it was weird, it was so good because the way that he set up to what he then revealed was fantastic and I just I couldn't have imagined it. It was so surprising, it was so exciting and I really really loved it. So in the story we follow a couple of main characters throughout all of the books. The major character is Kip who is a young boy. Initially in the first book he lives with his mother who seems like she's got a lot going on with her, a lot of mental health problems, lots of problems generally um, in life and she's not coping at all so she tells him to go and find his father when she dies and that's what he decides to do. Turns out his father happens to be the prism, and the prism is essentially the person in charge of the Chromeria, and the Chromeria have to bow down to the prism's whims, and he is the only person who can draft all of the colours in the visible spectrum. So he's a very, very powerful drafter and a very powerful political figure. So I really, really liked that, you know, stereotypical setup to the book. But then we have a few interesting things. We have a thing in the first book and throughout the series of Kip being overweight. He is overweight throughout all of the books and even in the later books where he has gone through training and toned up and got a bit better, he's still overweight. He's a very self-deprecating character so if you don't enjoy that you may not enjoy this series. The series definitely has scenes of torture, of rape, sometimes it's explicit, sometimes it's not. So maybe just stay clear if you're not into that at all and you can't deal with that. It also has some really interesting conditions, for example in book number four we follow a young lady who cannot have sex because of a condition that she has 
and that is a real condition that Brent Weeks researched and looked into and put into one of his characters in his book. So it's really interesting to see something a little bit different in fantasy that I've not really seen. It is a real condition. It made me interested in it. It wasn't something that I'd ever heard of, but it was definitely something that I was interested in. And I think that just added a little bit more of a diversity aspect to this book. Now, I will say that I think this book is, is not for everyone. This series is not for everyone. But for me, it just captivates so much of what I absolutely adore in books, which is fantastic characters who, by this point in the series, I'm really, really enjoying. My particular favourite is probably Tia, although in this book, she frustrated me a bit. Um, she is a young woman who is forced to do so many horrible things. She really has her life controlled by people around her. And it's not a nice life that she leads. But in this book, I do think she starts to be able to take a bit of that control back for herself and starts to just really grow into the person I think she can be. And I really, really like her. I also do like Kip. I really enjoy seeing Andros Kyle, who is the dark overlord type character in this book. He is so conniving and so manipulative. I like Karis, who is currently in a position of power, although I won't say what, but she used to be a blackguard and blackguards in this world are like the senior bodyguard type team. They have superpowers and they are highly trained, highly efficient killers and protectors of the prison specifically, but also the white who is kind of like the balancing factor for the prison. She is always a woman and uh, she just kind of helps to moderate between the chromeria, the different colours of the chromeria and between the prison. And she's also like the voice of reason. So it's a really, really interesting mix to have all these different layers. We've got the white in the prison at the top, then we've got the chromeria, then we've got the black guards, and then we've got sort of regular people. Um, there are different levels within drafting. So you can have like polychromats, superchromats, all sorts of other types of drafters and I think it's just a really really interesting setup for the world. We have quite a sprawling world, we have a couple of different characters who are in different parts of the world and we're following them all simultaneously so we see some of the overlapping storylines as you go further through. I just think this is great <laughs> so I don't know what else I could say to convince you. If you haven't watched my review of the first three in the series then I'll link them below. I go a bit more in detail on the magic system and things like that in the first one and the second one I think. So I'll link it below and hopefully you guys might get more of an understanding of what this is about. I don't want to do spoilers, but I adored this. It is fantastic. If you have read the first three in the series, I would 100% say that this is still fantastic and carries on the theme of just being really, really epic. I cannot wait to carry on with book five in the series. It was going to be a four book series. It's now a five book series and the fifth one will be the final one, I believe. Hopefully it comes out in a couple of months. I'm not sure. Um, when exactly it's due out but I think it was always going to be a four book series and he split it in half for the final book so hopefully that means it's nearly all finished I'm not sure um I'm really excited about the final book in the series and I think if it comes out next year that might be two final books in the series coming out next year that I'm really excited about but thank you all so much for watching thank you to Orbit for sending this to me I had to beg a lot but I was so grateful and I loved it I gave this five out of five stars. I would hugely recommend it. And yeah, tell me all your thoughts down below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.